Okay, what happened there? Did I blow my amp or something? <laughs> what happened? Did I break it? What did I do here? Today's video is sponsored by Native Sons Goods, makers of the highest quality woven guitar, bag, and camera straps you'll ever see. Native Sons straps are handmade one at a time in the USA with unparalleled love and care. Click the link in the description to check out their new expanded lineup featuring all new 3-inch guitar straps. And remember, when you support my sponsor, you support this channel, and I sure appreciate it. Hey, how's it going dudes and dudettes? Brad the Guitologist here. This company reached out to me the other day and wanted to send me this item. Actually, they gave me a choice of several things that uh, I could choose from. And I chose this because uh, this is one of the pieces of equipment I don't have a very good one of. The only uh, tone generator that I have is this little thing. <laughs> and you get these on banggood.com uh, and they're really cheap. You can get them other places too, but I'll put a link down in the description if you want to get one of these little guys. It actually works pretty well for what it is. It's really uh, kind of cool, portable. You can choose from some different wavelengths. And, you know, it's pretty much worked uh, okay for my purposes. I don't do a whole lot of stuff with really, uh, you know, analyzing hi-fi or any of that kind of stuff. It's, I mean, with guitar amps, you don't have to get that in-depth uh, on a lot of the stuff that you normally would get in depth on with you know radios or hi-fi so uh, I haven't needed a really sophisticated one but I got the chance to get one so we're gonna check this out and see how good it is uh, see how well it works if that sounds like something you'd be interested in stick around okay so let's see. all right what do we have here um, operations uh, we have a set of uh, alligator probes. Uh, there's another another probe there. A USB cable and a power cable. And I think that's all it's supposed to come with. Online, it looks pretty snazzy. It looked like a, a decent little uh, unit. So, looking forward to checking it out. All right. One of the things I noticed right away is that it has some really nice uh, rubber. Uh, feet on the top and the bottom. I guess if you want to stack multiple things on top of each other you can and it's kind of a non-skid too so once you put it somewhere and you kick the stand out let's see how the stand kicks out it pulls out probably yeah okay so you just pull the stand out and then you could set it like so um, that's for you know bench use so you can get it up on your bench and set it off to the side somewhere this bench is not really that large if I had a real nice big bench uh, I would probably set this you know kind of at the back of the bench somewhere and, and kick it up like this okay this is actually directing you on where you can go to download the operation guide you can go to uni-trend.com enter the model number also we'll see if it has any updates or anything like that for firmware Okay, so I was about to uh, sit down, uh, read the manual that I just downloaded, and just kind of go through everything before I started messing with this. But I thought, screw it, the manual is very long. And if I did that, I would probably be here for a week trying to figure out all of the features of this. So what I'm going to do instead, I'm just going to plug it in, turn it on, and see, uh, you know, see how intuitive all the controls and everything are with this. Um, I have the probe hooked up to an amplifier that's right back there uh, through this cable. So you'll get a little bit of noise probably right here, but it's not that huge of a deal. We're just going to test out the functionality. I'm going to plug it also into channel one. Uh, this right here is a, uh, a sync um, where you can sync this piece of equipment with other equipment and it uses you know that cable there if you want to sync it up with other things. Um, we're just going to go into the channel one. It has a dual channel setup so you can uh, use either or or both actually. Go ahead and turn it on. If you'll notice on the back when you plug it in, <clears throat> uh, you have an on off switch on the back in addition to the button on the front. Uh, also here on the back we have a, a USB uh, we also have a trigger port here, modulation in. Uh, we also have uh, 10 megahertz in and out. Uh, fuse, fan, and let's see. I think it's already in the on position, so let's go ahead and fire it up and see what it does. Like I said, I'm just kind of curious to see how uh, how intuitive this thing is and how easy it is to kind of figure out without having to go through the entire manual. Because, I mean, like I said, for the for the things that I will use this for personally, 
Um, I don't need a lot of the functions of this, but there, there are going to be a lot of people who will need those functions. Uh, but I just want to kind of go through it and see what all is available here. We'll turn the amp on back here as well. There you can hear it kicked on. We've got a screen. And let's see. I'll try to I'll try to make it where you can see what I'm doing and kind of hear what's going on. Right now it looks like we have it on sine wave. We could select uh, through some different types of waves. We've got a square wave, a ramp wave. There's a pulse. I'm not sure what that is. What is that arbitrary? We got noise. Let's go back to sine wave for just a moment. Uh, you can see here the frequency uh, is at 1.00 1, 1 kilohertz. Uh, amplitude is in uh, millivolts. Offset. The offset is going to be where you can, uh, you can move up and down. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now we're down to the offset. We should be able to... If we select it, let's see, hang on. Well, first of all, let's go back. Okay, we go back to the menu. We're on wave, right? Let's stay here for just a second. Is this even hooked up? Oh, I see why. Channel one's not selected. There we go. You have to select the channel. So you can turn that on and off. You can turn on channel two as well. And when you turn it on, it will automatically, right now it's not, it's detecting nothing. Well, I guess maybe we could use it. So like if we go to channel two, you know, we could have a separate set of probes over there. You get it, you get the idea. Well, let's just, let's kill channel two, bring channel one back up. Looks like you can also select between channel one and channel two without actually turning them on. So like right now, uh, it's in channel one, and if, if I'm already in channel one and I hit that a second time, it turns it off. Uh, but I can select over on channel two, you can see it didn't turn it on, it just it went to channel two so that I can, uh, I can adjust all the parameters of channel two without actually turning it on. But if I hit it again, it'll turn that on. So we want it off, we'll go back to channel one, but in, and again, it went back to the uh, selection of channel one parameters without actually turning it on but we'll turn it back on and you can see here once again we got the frequency we should be able to if I click into that and you can see how high your hearing goes mine I go up to about 13k Maybe 14. It looks like maybe I could slightly hear some 14k, but that's about it. Okay, so there's that. We can go, uh, let's see. You can change the phase. So you can basically uh, change, you know, where the starts and stops. And we, we just want to keep that in the middle. For my purposes, that's that's probably where I will I will probably use this about 99.9% .9 of the time in this setting right here. And uh, I'll just turn it on and off and that'll be about it because <laughs> usually what I would use this for is uh, putting in the front end of an amp as a signal uh, which will allow me to test certain things like you know signal trace uh, I'd also be able to um, you know check check bias I could check waveforms on the oscilloscope on the output and things like that um, so that's about 99 like I said 0.9 percent of what I would use this for let's see if we hit uh, menu Again, we have uh, some different types of waves that we can select. Square wave, ramp, pulse, whatever the hell that is, which I don't get.
kind of wondering. So if you're already selected into something, you could you could select it by pressing this, and then to get out of it, you can hit this again. Or if you're already in, I think you can also hit. Uh, let's see, frequency. If you hit frequency, okay. A lot of these, uh, a lot of these subcategories have categories of their own. So like if you're in frequency already, and you're adjusting the frequency, you can hit that again. And that will give you the ability to to, uh, to change the period uh, of the waves as well. So a lot of these have more than one, you know, selection. Okay, so here's here are your options for this particular setting. So what that, I guess that's voice, that's supposed to simulate what like a human voice, like if you're troubleshooting perhaps a, uh, some kind of microphone equipment, uh, you can select that and I guess that's supposed to simulate, you know, vocal range. I'm not really sure if the, any of this is stuff I would use very much. But you get the idea there without driving you absolutely insane. You can see all the different, uh, you know, features that this has. And anytime you get lost, if you just hit the menu button, it looks like it'll take you back to uh, this initial startup mode. But, you, you know, if you want to go back to sine wave at any point, you can always go back to sine wave. You can select type. Uh, let's see. Okay, no, this, I'm, I'm still in. Uh, you have actually one more selection beyond noise you have dc and that allow you that should allow you to change the uh, the voltage let's see is it going to do that there we go so yeah that'll change like the voltage at uh, at the zero point it looks like, uh, let's see. Okay, so let's go back to sine wave. We'll go to parameters of the sine wave. Got our, again, our frequency. We could change the period as well. You can change it also by uh, uh, by tens of kilohertz. Uh, let's see how would you get to the other one? Yeah, okay. If I hit the side arrow, I can do it by the ones place. Um, let's see. You can see whether it's off or on. Let's see. Um, Okay, go to modulation. Let's see what we have here. We've got... You can set a, a radio frequency carrier signal. You can also set the uh, the modulation, how that carrier signal is is modulated, either F, AM, FM, um, PM, ASK. You get the you get the idea. Okay, it looks like you can select between an internal or an external source. Uh, 
So like I said, this has a lot of options that I probably will not use, um, at least not normally, uh, when using this thing. Because a lot of this stuff will be used um, when, tr you know, troubleshooting uh, stuff like radios, for instance. You can see you can change the carrier signal right there. You can make the carrier signal a sine wave or a square wave, ramp wave, pulse. Um, so yeah, a lot of stuff that that again I won't be using. You, uh, you can also do sweeps, which is kind of cool, um, and that might be useful if you're trying to troubleshoot um, certain rattles or something in amplifiers. If you want to send a signal through it, that kind of sweeps from one frequency up to another frequency. Um, you can change the nature of the frequency, whether it's a it's um, linear or logarithmic. Um, I'll show you what I mean here. I'll see. You can hear what it's doing right there. It's cycling between a one kilohertz signal and a two kilohertz uh, sine wave, um, and that was logarithmic. So the transition between the two frequencies was logarithmic right there. We can change it to linear. Uh, and you can also set the frequencies, of course. I guess I could start at one. Let's go to stop frequency. And we can change that all the way up to wherever we want it to go. Let's start uh, where I stopped hearing it earlier. So we'll... It's changed the sweep time, so it takes longer. So you get the idea with that. Like I said, it might be um, useful, like, uh, you know, if you set it something like this and you set the time you know elongate the time that will allow you to uh, kinda see where you know your noises are happening uh, in your amplifier cabinet so if you're troubleshooting some kinda weird rattle maybe um, you know you could do things like that too uh, okay this is so you can set another piece of equipment to trigger the trigger this sweep to happen if I put it on external it will wait for a. It get, should get to the end of this cycle and then wait for an external trigger. I would think. All right. Yeah. See, it goes back to the regular sine wave, and it's waiting for an external trigger when it's in that mode. Uh, can I? How can I manually trigger it? Maybe. There we go. So if I had something hooked up here, I could also trigger it with, you know, with that, probably by shorting the leads or something, something there, but I can also trigger it with the button. And if I'm sick of hearing it, I could turn it off. So that could be kind of trippy to play with there. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is uh, looks like a fairly sophisticated little piece of kit, man. I'm I'm very happy with it, especially uh, for having given given nothing for it. Uh, this was a uh, complimentary to me for doing the review, but uh, this is a piece of equipment that I've probably needed for quite a while. I mean, it's definitely more sophisticated than this little thing, and uh, you know, easier to control as well. These these little things are, like I said, they're kind of nice in a pinch, uh, and they will get you by uh, for a lot of the things that at least what I do. Uh, but it's not very accurate. None of the, you know these uh, these tones really. It's all analog as well. The controls, uh, so it's just the accuracy is not there. Um, but with this, you know the accuracy is definitely there. And uh, yeah, you've got all these different uh, types of waves that it will generate. And just yeah, good good piece of kit. Let's see what's this, what's this utility. Okay, is this okay? You set the output just on or off. You know what? I'm going to start up a wave. Okay, we'll just start a one kilohertz sine wave. Let's go to utility. On output, I wonder if it just... Yeah, okay, so that turns it off. 
So I guess you have digital controls over the, the you know, the same, the button controls as well, it looks like. Let's see, what's in version? Okay, that would be inverting the wave so that, you know, on the up cycle, it would be turning it, flip, flipping it down. Uh, it's kind of like ch just switching the phase, which is real, you know, not necessary. You may, re you may need that for some applications, but definitely won't need it for anything that I do I don't think I'll, I'll probably never use that feature 50 ohm yes so you can change okay you can change the load I think I want to leave it on high Z because I will probably always use it uh, with that quarter inch cable into that little amplifier right back there uh, or at least most of the time I will and I will probably also use it for the most part into equipment that will require that sort of uh, sort of load Amp limit. So I guess that's applying a limiter. I'm, I'm guessing on the output. Uh, that's. Let's see. This is. I guess you can select the upper limit. Right. Oh, it turned off my sine wave when it did that. Okay. So let's go. Let's start up my sine wave again. Hang on. All right, wait a minute. Okay, what happened there? Did I blow my amp or something? <laughs> what happened? What's going on? Change that back to off. What the hell, dude? Well, I'm not sure what I did there. I can still hear it though. So I wonder why did I change, let's see, what did I do? Okay, so the amp is fine. Something's not right with the... Uh... Turn that one off. Yeah, it's really low volume now. Okay, did I break it? What did I do here? What did I do? Because... It was working fine. Okay, I was in utility. And I set the... Hmm. Did I change? Did I do something with the lower limit? No. No. It happened when I was. It happened when I was messing with that. Outputs on. Uh, well, that is certainly interesting. I think I've uh, somehow, somehow, I've managed to screw it up. I'm not sure what I did. Well, it looks like in the system uh, settings here, we've got you can change the language. Um, Let's see, clock source, internal or external clock. You can use this to sync up to an out, outside clock. Um, I 
I wonder if I can can I put this back to factory because I, I've definitely screwed something up uh, let's see okay factory set right There we go. It's back now. Okay, so that fixed that. So I guess if you ever if you ever experience something like that, you can go into utility. Where did I go? System. Uh, you can change back to factory settings. I'm not sure how I did that. <laughs> there it is. Load setting. Looks like you've got some help files and stuff as well. Let's see, for the help for the menu, press, uh, long press the corresponding button. Oh, so, okay. Well, that's cool. If you go into help, it will tell you what these buttons do. Uh, so, yeah, that's it. That's cool. That's got the help file. Um, I mean, there's not a whole lot to be helped with. It's pretty, like I said, fairly intuitive. Just a really, and it seems fairly well built as well. Like I said, just really nice rubbery feet on this thing. Nice sturdy handle. Uh, cool thing about the handle too is, you know, of course you could set it on the desk like this, or you can uh, also if you're if you're carrying this around with you, um, you can put it in the upright position and, and use this as a carrying handle. So that's cool. Or you can retract it all the way, and you can set it all the way down like this if you're stack, you know, if you want to use it in this manner. Uh, the only thing I do miss, though, is that it, it doesn't look like it'll hang from that. It would be nice if it had a, bra a hanging bracket where, you know, you could actually mount this under something. But, yeah, man, overall, yeah, nice nice little bit of kit here, really. Okay, we're going to attempt to use this thing in conjunction with uh, my computer. I'm not... I have no clue how to do this. This really wasn't covered in the manual, uh, but there are a lot of files that you can download. Uh, it actually directs you if you go to the uh, UniTrend website. There are a bunch of files that you can go download from a Google folder and uh, store on your computer. And I've already done that, and I've got. Uh, all of these files on here. You can see I've got the operating manual. I also have a revision 3 operating manual. Uh, one of these units shows a LAN connection in the in the rear and the example that I have does not have a LAN connection so I'm not sure. Okay, let's see. First of all, if we go to README, please install the .NET FX40 client and the SG controller communication control software so the communication control software can be used okay I am currently connected uh, to the computer via USB so yeah see we've got this again um, I think what this is going to do is it's going to allow me to um, it's going to allow me to create any kind of arbitrary, you know, waveform I want to create over time. So I can, you know, part sine wave, part this, part that, whatever. Free draw, really? <laughs> so you can freely draw some crap like this. All right. I mean, it's not like they've given me much instruction here, so I don't. I don't know. It's just, it's interesting that it, it comes with this program and that you can do this. I just don't. You know, I don't foresee this being very useful for me uh, in what I do. Is it going to communicate somehow with the uh, with the unit? See, that's not. It's not giving me very much. Let's see. There's nothing else even up here. I I try right clicking. It's not. Okay, here we go. Export it. What do I do? Click on... What the hell do I click on to get to that, though? This? Oh, there we go. Okay. So, let's see. Export the wave data. Okay, you can save it as a waveform, or you can save it as a an edited... Uh, an editor file. It doesn't really tell me how to get it onto the unit. So, anyway, like, uh, there's that program. That, like I said, it's not... It's not really anything to write home about. It's just for creating these arbitrary waveforms. 
Yeah, see, I'm not getting any of this. Uh, after you choose your device model, the generator control interface pops up. No, it doesn't pop up. It's not giving me a damn thing. It's supposed to pop up with this where I can, uh, you know, I can interface with this unit. But I wonder why it's not doing that. Maybe it's just not connecting to it for some reason. Could be that it's also incompatible with uh, Windows 10. I hope you guys have gotten something out of this. If you have, hit subscribe down below. And for now, y'all take care.